world's top astrophysicists, Dr. Bergogina was here. She is looked at as a world expert in how the universe works and in exoplanets. She does TED talks and is well known in astrophysics circles. Out there in the universe. And the Earth is just one of them. In this universe, we are really tiny. We put Earth in the center of the universe. Then the, we realized something wrong with it, so we put the Sun in the center of the universe. Again, it was a little mixed. We put Milky Way in the center of the universe. Not so bad. And we found out in the end that there is no center of the universe. <laughs> Our planet is just a single blue dot among billions of other stars and billions of other planets. We use these plants as prototypes of photos photosynthetic organisms in the universe. And then we build models for alien lives, how they could look. And when we puzzled with this question, how aliens can look like, we actually find answers in the backyard. When we detect life in other planets, we will understand and learn that we are not alone. And we are not special. I wanted to interview her, but how? I thought about it and I created an alias, David Howard from Oxford University Media Society, and created some online material supporting this front. After some well thought out, tricky and delicate emails, I got the appointment, and with the backstory that I was collecting information for young students at Oxford. As I waited in the lobby of this advanced university astrophysics centre, I could see that this was a business with funding, hierarchy, secretaries, etc. Now before we get into the interview, for those new to the channel, know that gravity is just a theory, and my blog in 2015 explained the errors with gravity, and that it can be explained away by density and buoyancy. This blog had over 50,000 views, with not one person debunking it. Also worth knowing is that in 1931, a book called 100 Authors Against Einstein was published in German, and is in the description. This shows a hundred scientists stating Einstein was leading science into pseudo-mysticism, abstraction and speculation. It was crushed by mainstream science. Also know of the Dunning-Kruger effect, a cognitive bias in which experts mistakenly assess their cognitive ability as greater than it is. It's related to the cognitive bias of illusory superiority. And also comes from the inability of people to recognise these experts' lack of ability. Obviously in this interview I couldn't say what I really wanted to early on, as I didn't want her to walk out. I wanted her to cover more subjects and get more answers. So take a seat and buckle up. And this gets more interesting as it continues, and presents a big key, one the truth community has needed for a while. Okay, let's play. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, and this doesn't go to unedited somewhere. You will edit this? Yeah, somehow? sure, yeah. sure. You can swear or go to the toilet or whatever, it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Sure. Uh, hello, Dr. Bergogina. If hello. You could Hello, if you could just spend one minute or 30 seconds explaining who you are and what you've done. Oh, yeah. So i grown up in Russia. I fell in love with astronomy, first with physics and then with astronomy. And I realized that I want to understand the universe. I cannot live on Earth without knowing what's above my head. I just felt like I need to know. I went to the university studied astrophysics and mathematics, a lot of programming, a lot of programming, a lot of programming, because when we were studying astronomy, we were told that astronomy is not just science by itself, it's very interdisciplinary, so to be an astronomer or astrophysicist, you need to know physics, mathematics, programming, 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 and I must tell right now, so lots of social skills. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Great. On to the next question. Mm -hmm. uh, it is written in 
in astrophysics that the rotation of the Earth is due to, we can't feel it because of constant velocity. Now, one astrophysics guy I met, he said there are two constant speeds. Mm -hmm. Let me show you this. Yes. A bit like this fairground ride. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. And some people I know looked at some rotation physics and they said, if you're on the edge of this, mm -hmm. you would be experiencing acceleration and deceleration. It's only the middle point mm -hmm. that would experience like the wizard in the middle. Mm -hmm. The wizard would be constant velocity, mm -hmm. but if you're on the edge, you get, you get acceleration and deceleration mm -hmm. because of the two constant speeds. Mm -hmm. how, would, how would you answer that? You mean why, why this happens? Or <laughs> well, surely with yeah. the rotation of the Earth yeah. and because it's going around the Sun at 66,000 miles an hour, yeah. we'd be experiencing deceleration and acceleration. So think of this fairground ride, pick one human being, mm -hmm. so pretend that's all the right. Earth. So you want to include all the velocities involved, also Earth, uh, Just two. rotation? Just two, the mm -hmm. Earth rotation on its axis, 1,000 mm -hmm. miles an hour, mm -hmm. and 66,000 miles an hour around the Sun. Mm -hmm. If you're on the edge of this sphere, like a human being, mm -hmm. you okay. would surely be experiencing deceleration yes. Yes, and yes, acceleration. Exactly. exactly. How does astrophysics at your level uh, explain that? Well, it's gravitational forces. So one gravitational force you have towards the Earth center. So this is gravity of Earth. Yeah. And that what uh, holds Earth together. And, and it, when it rotates, you experience this uh, acceleration on the edge of the Earth and the gravity towards the Earth. But when the Earth goes around the Sun, there is gravitational force towards the center of the Sun. So two gravitational forces produce this <clears throat> effect of acceleration and deceleration combination. Bingo! Yahtzee! Is that your final answer? Our survey says... But wouldn't that mean we're not at a constant velocity so humans should feel the rotation of the Earth? That is interesting. Yes. It's an interesting one. <laughs> yes. The, mm -hmm. the, the astrophysicist I met, he did a model mm -hmm. showing that it mm -hmm. should show acceleration and deceleration. So I could actually show you a video where this goes mm -hmm. around the sun mm -hmm. and it shows, and even you can go onto the, I, the International Space Station, which is orbiting the Earth, and this also should be showing acceleration and deceleration due to the two constant motions, just like the fairground ride. Right. Well, uh, probably need some homework. Yeah, I need some thinking. But well, it's an interesting one, yeah? It is an interesting question, yes. Uh, we usually think, I mean, that the pull, to, we have to compare this acceleration to the gravitational pull. Okay. That I would start with. Because velocity is one thing, but acceleration is the other thing. Yeah. So we have to compare acceleration due to rotation to the acceleration due to gravity. Yeah. And it's very possible that gravitational acceleration is lighter. Mm. That's why we just don't feel this tight. I think we would need three different answers. One for mm. the Earth, mm -hmm. one for the International Space Station, and then one, imagine an astronaut outside the International mm -hmm. Space Station. Yes, yes. How would he be staying with the space station? Mm. Because they're all doing this acceler... They're all acting under these two constant yes. forces, two yes, constant yes. motions. Exactly, yeah. So this is a question I've, I can't get answered. It's a very interesting one. Yeah, the, the, but in this case, uh, space station and the astronaut in space, they are like... Uh, Probe, we call it probe particles, free yeah. particles to probe the gravitational fields. Yeah, so they will orbit the Earth because of the gravitational pull of Earth, but together with Earth, they will move around the Sun. So, and that is because the gravitational acceleration of the Earth to the Sun is much larger than gravitational acceleration of any of us to the Earth. So they just don't notice it. Yeah, they don't notice this. Okay. So that is, I think this, of course, the rotation around the sun, orbiting around the sun, it's a huge velocity, but we're so uh, pulled to the earth that this earth to the sun is, is somewhere. Our survey said... <laughs> In the 1700s, mm -hmm. on the same theme, mm -hmm. uh, James Bradley did an experiment which was redone in 1871 by a G. Airy. Obviously, this is a long time ago. 
and also the Michelson Morley experiment in 1887, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all these detected no rotation of the Earth. Mm -hmm. This is a bit of a silly question. No, no they what? detected no ether. No ether, yeah, this no. is, I've read this. Yes, no, no motion of the Earth with respect uh, on, to the sky. Uh, motionless uh, ether. That's the, that's the measurement. So they disprove that there is ether. Okay. Yeah, this could be interpreted in many ways. So what mm -hmm. scientific method, instrumentation or experiment would you say uh, proves the Earth is rotating? What would be your first, number one best proof if you were doing a lecture? Uh, that uh, we see sunsets and sunrises. Okay. <laughs> Moonsets and moonrises, yes. <laughs>
and for the butterfly, I guess they can coordinate that. And it would be the same answer for gravity strong enough to hold the moon in orbit, yes. but astronauts can float about and pretty much choose what direction they go in. No, 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 no. Astronauts are like, um, um, in, for astronauts to move again, um, so space, uh, let's assume it's empty. There are photons here. We know from Planck mission there are photons, but let's say, and there are particles, but let's say in the first approximation it's empty. So there is no buoyancy there. There's only gravity in space, yeah? Our survey said... <laughs>